Welcome to this presentation on Minister's Benefits and the Path to Retire Well. This is Kevin Gilmore, and I have the privilege of serving as Executive Director of Nazarene Benefits USA. We've prepared this material as an overview of the benefits that we provide to active Nazarene ministers in the United States, and a more detailed focus on the newly implemented Minister's Matching Program for active ministers in our 403B plan. It's our goal to see that every Nazarene minister is on a path to retire well, and we want to do all that we can to assist you on that journey. This pie chart is a visual representation of our areas of focus, and they are sized to roughly demonstrate the level of time and effort that we dedicate to each area. Beginning at the 12 o'clock position and moving clockwise, you'll see that half of our time is spent on retirement benefits, with the majority focused on the 403B Retirement Savings Plan for active ministers. The basic pension plan for ministers was closed to new participants in 1996, but we continue to fund and administrate payments and serve the needs of our retirees and those who continue to accrue benefits from active service. The other half of our time is spent administering insurance plans, providing educational resources, and a benevolence program to help meet the needs of ministers in a time of crisis. So let's begin by answering this question. Choose all that apply. Active ministers may receive NBUSA provided benefits if they have a local church license, have a district license, or are ordained. And the answer is B and C. They must have a district license or be ordained and those credentials need to be held on a U.S. district. True or false? Eligible ministers receive basic life and disability insurance benefits if their church supports the NBUSA fund. Well, that's true. If the church contributes at least $1 annually to the NBUSA fund. Eligibility for our benefits is evaluated every January 1st. So you must have an active credential, being district licensed or ordained on file with a U.S. district. The local church you serve must support the NBUSA fund. And if you are a leader, senior pastor, including if you're bivocational, then you're automatically eligible due to your position. If you're an associate pastor, you must meet the full-time, full livelihood standards, which require an average of 30 hours per week for at least 30 weeks a year. And your earnings from this ministry role must account for at least 50% of your annual earnings. Eligible ministers are provided a base level of survivor benefits through a life insurance policy dependent upon your age as of January 1st. If you are aged 50 or under, your beneficiaries will receive $30,000. Ages 51 to 70, the benefit drops to $15,000, and at ages 71 to 75, it is $7,500. If your spouse dies first, you will receive a benefit of $2,500. Life insurance proceeds are not considered taxable income under the current IRS code, and you will have access to purchase additional supplemental coverage. Qualified ministers are automatically covered with a base level of long-term disability insurance, which provides a $500 per month taxable benefit until you reach your full retirement age. There is no application required and there's no waiting period. The benefit will not apply to you until the January 1st following the date that you become an eligible minister. So true or false, if my church pays 100% of its NBUSA fund budget allocations, then my retirement is taken care of. Well, that is false. There has never been a time in the history of the Nazarene church that a minister could wholly rely upon only the retirement benefits provided by NBUSA to retire well. The minister and the local church must both participate in supporting the minister's retirement plans as called for in the manual. If you are not already aware, the Funding the Mission formula, which has a component for the World Evangelism Fund, our NBUSA Fund, and your region's educational fund, has changed in 2024. Back in 2012, the allocations were adjusted to shift a quarter percent away from the education fund and to the NBUSA fund to help support the funded status of the pension trust. 
When the Board of General Superintendents implemented this change, a commitment was made to the universities to restore the original formula as soon as the pension fund had been stabilized. The restored formula allocations have been implemented at each new district assembly year that's begun in 2024. This is going to result in a decline of revenues to the NBUSA fund, but we have planned for this in advance through our budgeting process and the reduction in our level of contribution requirements to the pension trust will more than offset this change in our revenues. 81% of our funding has historically been devoted to supporting our retirement plans with the vast majority of that focused on the pension plan for its nearly 7,000 participants, most of which have already retired. Moving forward, this will drop to 72%, with 32% going to the pension plan and 40% to the 403B plan for active ministers. We were able to do this because the pension plan reached a stabilized status and requires less annual funding to meet its current and future pension obligations. At NBUSA, our mission is to serve those who serve the Church of the Nazarene in the U.S., and we have been doing this since 1919. We changed our name from Pensions and Benefits USA to Nazarene Benefits USA in September of 2023 to better align with the focus of our mission today. At the same time, we adopted a new vision statement that says Nazarene ministers retire well. Now, retiring well doesn't necessarily mean rich, and it isn't the same for everyone. But at MBUSA, we define it as being able to retire at a normal age and with sufficient resources to support your desired lifestyle. So what does it mean to retire well? Well, it takes personal savings. Those are the funds that you contribute to your retirement accounts and the amount of assets that you own outside of your retirement. And next are your Nazarene employer benefits, which are the contributions to your 403B account by your local church employer and the matching contributions by NBUSA. And then finally, your monthly Social Security benefits. For most of our Nazarene ministers, it will take all three of these resources to retire well. Clergy in the U.S. are provided some unique tax advantages. They're highlighted here in yellow gold. The first of which is the ability to exclude housing related costs from federal taxable income, referred to as the housing allowance. While every taxpayer can shelter contributions to their retirement account from federal income taxes, members of the clergy have an advantage in also being able to exclude them from social security taxes. Taxes on earnings within most retirement accounts are deferred until they're withdrawn. And distributions from your Nazarene 403B retirement plan qualify for housing allowance treatment in retirement, provided you maintain your credential with a local U.S. district. This means you have the potential to contribute, earn, and distribute funds in your retirement account without ever paying income taxes on them. These are powerful financial advantages that every minister should use to maximize their potential in retirement. Housing allowance is a significant benefit for ministers, but there are rules and regulations that need to be followed. Unlike when you are active in ministry, when you retire, there is no need to obtain approval of an annual housing allowance amount from the church. Our 403B plan specifically allows distributions for ministers to be classified as eligible for housing allowance. After the end of each calendar year, you will receive a 1099R reporting statement from Fidelity for the amount of your distributions. And as a minister, the amount that you received will be reported as taxable amount not determined because it is up to you to justify to the IRS the amount that you've excluded from taxable income as housing allowance. And then you should keep the documentation for that in your tax files. So how much do you need to retire? Well, it does vary by person and your lifestyle, but generally the guidelines from Fidelity provide a simple path to follow. At each of the age intervals shown in this chart, you should have the indicated multiple of your annual salary or wages as a minimum balance in your retirement accounts. So at age 30, if you're making $35,000 a year, you should have $35,000 in your retirement account. By age 45, let's assume you're making $50,000 a year. Well, you should have four times that amount or $200,000 in your account and so on. 
So exactly how should you save for retirement? Let's answer that question. Additional guidance from Fidelity includes the following. Number one, save 15% of your gross income, and you should begin doing that by age 25. That 15% of your gross income includes what you put into your retirement account through payroll, what your employer puts into your retirement account, and what NBUSA puts in your account through our new matching program. Number two, keep most of your funds invested in the stock market, at least 50% on average over the course of your life. The younger you are, the more risk tolerance that you should have with the stock market. And as you get closer to retirement, you should be shifting closer to that 50% or below level to be more conservative. Number three, plan to retire at 67, which is what the Social Security system says is your normal retirement age today but you should plan to have sufficient assets to support you until age 93. Number four, plan to maintain your current lifestyle. And number five is review your retirement strategy at least annually to gauge your progress and then to make any necessary adjustments. Well, retirement readiness is not a unique problem, but it is certainly a Nazarene problem. A study from 2015 indicated that 74% of our ministers lack sufficient resources to retire until after the age of 72. A more recent study in 2019 of 700 of our lead and senior pastors, this is excluding by vocational, so these are full-time lead and senior pastors, showed that 59% had no savings for retirement and worse yet, 67% of their local churches were not helping them. So what picture comes to your mind when you think about retirement readiness? At NBUSA, we find that retirement readiness is the elephant in the room that everyone sees, but nobody wants to talk about. Here's what the manual of the Church of the Nazarene says, and the emphasis here has been added. Under the calling of a pastor, it says the payment of the pastor's salary in full shall be considered a moral obligation by the church. And then under the local church board section, it says it is the local church board's responsibility to determine the amount of remuneration and benefits, including retirement benefits, the pastor shall receive and to review them at least once per year. Here's some happy news for you. According to Social Security, men who are currently age 67 are expected to live another 15.8 years. And if you're a woman, you're expected to live 2.3 years longer than a man. Well, whether you agree with these numbers or not, this is how they view your life expectancy. And they use these data points to determine the value of your Social Security benefits. If you have not recently visited the Social Security website to check on your earnings history and your projected benefits, you need to do so. You should do that at least once each year to ensure that your earnings records agree with theirs. The Social Security website contains a quick calculator for benefit estimates, and we've plugged in the demographics for a minister age 30 who's earning $40,000 per year, which is about $3,300 a month, and he plans to retire at age 67, which is normal retirement age, and we asked to see the Social Security benefit in today's dollars. And as you can see, this minister can expect to receive $1,750 per month at their normal retirement age. If they chose to retire early, the benefit drops by 35% to $1,140. And if they waited until the maximum age of 70, their benefit increases by 20% to $2,100. As stated previously, we should plan to live longer than the average person. So let's take a quick look at the level of retirement benefits provided to active ministers by NBUSA through the 2022 and 2023 annual pension supplement program. A minister who earned a benefit received an average of about $600 contributed by NBUSA to their 403B account for each of those years. So if we provided $600 in contributions every year for 40 years, the average minister would retire with $127,000 in their 403B account from NBUSA. That level of retirement funds would provide the minister with $715 per month in cash flow, assuming that the remaining balance earned 5%. So that $715 per month would last for 26 years, and then it would be gone. So let's combine the APS benefit information with the normal Social Security benefit example we just reviewed 
and see how they compare to the minister's current salary. So the first thing we have to do is convert the future $715 monthly NBUSA benefit to a current value. Because if you have to wait 37 years to get the $715 benefit, it has to be worth much less than that in today's dollars. And so the present value calculation shows the NBUSA benefit is worth only $66 in today's value. So in this scenario, the minister would be receiving retirement benefits equivalent to 55% of what they're earning today. Do you want to retire on 55% of what you're making today? What about inflation? What about health care costs in retirement? So what's the solution to the lack of retirement readiness among our clergy? After much study and consideration, we believe the answers are, first, there needs to be much more local effort, meaning local contributions directly to the minister's 403B account, but also we need to increase the level of contribution benefits provided by NBUSA. Over the past two plus years, we've been working on this solution and it was made effective on January 1st, 2024. Before we get into the details, understand the material that you are about to see relates to the new 403B matching benefit for local ministers. There is a similar program that has been implemented for district superintendents and other district assigned ministers and evangelists, but that material is not covered here. So the structure of the APS program was a major factor in the lack of retirement readiness among our pastors. And because of this, the program was terminated at the end of 2023 and was replaced by the new ministers matching program effective January 1st, 2024. The new program requirements begin with making certain that the local church supports the NBUSA fund by paying in at least 50% of its budget allocations. After that, matching contributions by NBUSA will be made based on the total of local effort contributions from elective deferrals by the minister through payroll and or employer contributions made directly by the local church. So if there is no local effort, then there will be no USA match. And starting in June of 2024, a minister's level of student debt payments will also be included in the amount of local effort eligible for the NBUSA match. This will allow ministers who are burdened with student loan debt to focus on getting that debt paid off while NBUSA, or even if their local church, if they want, can help provide matching benefits into their retirement account. So visit our website for the details on how to register your student loans for this benefit. This table contains the schedule of how the new minister's match from NBUSA is determined. The first measure in column A is the level of NBUSA fund allocations paid by the local church in the most recently completed church year. Column B shows the percentage level of the NBUSA match that applies to the level of local contributions directly to the minister's 403B account by either the minister or the local church. And then column C shows the maximum NBUSA matching dollars that could be contributed to the minister's 403B account at each of the levels that are shown in column A. So let's walk through how the minister's matching program works using an example that hits the maximum benefit available. Let's assume we have a church that pays 100% of its NBUSA fund allocations. The local pastor contributes a total of $1,800, which is $150 per month, directly to their 403B account through elective payroll deferrals. The local church comes along and matches what the minister does. So they put in $1,800 per year. And then in addition, this minister makes annual student loan payments equal to $1,400 per year. So the total of the above amounts equals $5,000 of local effort that are eligible for the NBUSA match. Again, since this church paid 100% of its NBUSA fund budgets, NBUSA will match that $5,000 by 50% and add $2,500 to the minister's account. So this example demonstrates how a local minister could end up with $6,100 per year in their 403B account through the shared effort of the minister, the local church, and NBUSA. After 40 years of this, this minister would be able to retire with $1.3 in their 403B account. That's a real number. 
That's a far cry from the 127,000 we looked at earlier when the only source of contributions was NBUSA. And note that $6,100 per year represents 15% of a $40,000 salary. And as I said earlier, most financial advisors will advise you to be sure you are contributing 15% of your income for retirement annually. Here are two additional pieces of information about the new matching program. First, the local church percentage level of NBUSA funds paid is measured as the higher of the most recently completed church year or the most recent five-year average. We've done this on purpose because we know that churches go through seasons and especially around the time of transitions and leadership. So we're trying to find reasons to put money in the pastor's 403B account, not set up barriers to deny them those deposits. And secondly, under the former APS program, a minister could not receive a match unless the local church had also paid 100% of its education fund budget. Well, that provision expired with the APS program at the end of 2023, and it no longer applies. Participation in this new program is affordable, and we would say you actually can't afford to miss the opportunity. So let me illustrate it by asking, would you be willing to invest $1,240 of your hard-earned money in order to receive $750? That $750 would represent a 61% return on your investment. When was the last time you earned a 61% return on anything? Well, they, these are very real numbers and they are achievable if you take action and you plan for it. I'm about to show you how contributing $1,500 through payroll deductions per year will only cost you $1,240 out of pocket after the related tax benefits, but you will end up with $2,250 in your 403b account. And if you did this for 40 years, you would end up with approximately $450,000 in your retirement account. Here's an example of how it works. This minister earns a base salary of $40,000. The church adds another 8.3% of that amount to their compensation as a reimbursement for the self-employment taxes the minister must pay under SICA. The minister claims a $12,000 housing allowance. They are married and file a joint tax return with their spouse, who we're assuming in this example has no additional income. We're using the 2023 tax code and ignoring state income taxes because it varies so much by state. And we're saying that they have no other dependents, which would actually cause additional tax deductions. This minister will have net take home pay of nearly $37,000 after taxes. Now let's add to this mix a $1,500 elective deferral by the minister to their 403B account through payroll deduction. The local church where this minister serves pays 100% of its NVUSA fund budget allocations. Here's the financial impact of how things change because the minister contributed $1,500 to their 403b account. So their take-home pay declined by a total of $1,240. That's $103 per month. But the minister now has $1,500 in their 403b account. Because the church paid 100% of its NBUSA fund budget, NBUSA matches 50% of the $1,500 contribution with a $750 minister's match. So the minister is out of pocket a net of only $490, but they now have $2,250 in their 403B account. So if you do this for 40 years, you will end up with approximately $450,000 in your 403B account. Here's a bit more detail as to how these numbers work. Because the minister made a payroll contribution of $1,500, they were able to reduce their Social Security taxes by $230 and reduce their federal income taxes by $30. These tax reductions save this minister $260 in current year taxes, which reduces the cash impact of their $1,500 contribution to only $1,240. The $750 contributed by NBUSA further reduces their reduction to a margin of only $490, and they have $2,250 in their 403B account. The example I just shared with you showed no local effort contributions by the church. Imagine how much those figures could be improved upon if the local church came alongside the pastor in some manner. 
And the local church may make contributions directly to the pastor's 403B account in two ways. The first is in discretionary amounts. This could be an annual lump sum, a fixed amount made on a regular schedule, or anything in between that. And another option is employer matching, where the church agrees to match a percentage of what the minister contributes to their own account. This could be a 100% match or a 100% match with a maximum dollar limit or a lesser percentage match. Or use a combination of both of those methods to contribute to the minister's account. The local church should consider what method best fits their budget and their type of operation. Under the old APS program, contributions by NBUSA were made once per year. Under the new minister's matching program, we will make contributions four times per year. Because the new match is based on the level of local contributions to the minister's 403B account, we will monitor that activity for each calendar quarter and then make the appropriate contributions by the end of the following month. For the first quarter of 2024, which ended in March, we gathered a report from Fidelity, our 403B plan record keeper, which showed every minister who had local contributions deposited to their 403B account during that first quarter. We reviewed those amounts for ministers who were eligible as of January 1st, and then calculated and deposited our NBUSA match in April, and we'll repeat this process every quarter going forward. This gets the funds into your account faster, and it puts them to work for your retirement more quickly than the old APS structure. Due to the structure of the student loan debt payment match, we will only be able to match those dollars once per year during the second quarter. That's something we hope we can change in the future, but it's a constraint of the structure of the servicer, and we'll deal with that in the future as we can. So here are the results from the first quarter of activity under the new matching program compared to the expired APS program. As you can see, the average NBUSA benefit grew by 18%. This is comparing the first quarter of 24 results to the entire results for the year in 2023. So that is a significant improvement for just one quarter. Next, the number of, of ministers who receive a match grew by 25% from 1,213 to 1,512. Again, we're comparing the first quarter of 2024 to the entire year for 2023, another significant improvement. And finally, the graphic on the right shows the average amount contributed to a minister's account for the first quarter of 2024, including the NBUSA match that we made in April. It was $2,270, and $1,560 of that came from the local effort contributions of the ministers and or their local church. So while we are pleased with the results, and we definitely think it's going in the right direction, we know that there are still many ministers who are not yet engaged. So after being presented with this information, I simply ask, what is your plan? You know, the most important step you take is the very next one. Let me encourage you to start small. Take baby steps and crawl before you walk and walk before you run. Talk with your church treasurer or your church board, whichever is the most appropriate in your situation. Talk to them about your financial plans for retirement and ask them to assist you. If you're bivocational, you need to consider all the options available to you and see how best to maximize your NBUSA provided benefits. And if you're one of the majority of ministers who's not on the path to retire well, it won't do you any good to lament the past because you can't change it, but you can change your future. So focus your efforts there. And finally, please don't wait. Retirement is about time and money. The more you have of one, the less you will need of the other. And there is a high cost to waiting. This table of data illustrates why waiting is so costly. If you have a goal of saving somewhere around $500,000 in your 403b account for when you retire, you must contribute $2,500 per year for 40 years if you start at age 27. If you wait five more years, you have to increase that amount to $3,500 per year. If you wait an additional five more years, you will need $5,000 per year. And if you waited another five years to age 42, you will need to put away $7,500 per year in order to reach that goal. Which of those scenarios do you most likely associate with? Well, the IRS sets limitations on the amount that can be contributed to a 403B retirement account in any year. That's usually not a problem for a Nazarene minister, but I often get asked this question, so we're providing that information here. 
This table shows you the limits for 2024 with a comparison of what they were in 2023. I will tell you these amounts are typically uh, raised every year by the Internal Revenue Service. If you are 50 or older, there are additional amounts that you may contribute, which are known as catch-up contributions. So the amount shown under the employee section here, the regular and the catch-up is the amount the employee may contribute annually. And then the amounts on the right column are what the employee and employer in total can contribute to a, to a retirement account. So we recognize that there are some ministers who serve without cash compensation. An example of that would be a lead pastor who's bivocational and has provided the use of a church parsonage as compensation for his or her ministry role. Well, there's an exception in the Internal Revenue Code called Section 415C that provides a special alternative for church plans. So this provision allows the church to contribute up to $10,000 per year to the minister's 403B account, and it has a lifetime maximum of 40,000. So if that is your situation, you need to be aware that this option does exist for you, but it has its annual and lifetime limitations. We want you to know that you don't have to do any of this alone, and really you shouldn't. Help is available from Fidelity. Their website is full of helpful tools, but you can also speak with an advisor Monday through Friday between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern. You can utilize the 1-866-NAZARENE number, and it will direct you to an advisor that is familiar with working with the unique status of ministers and church retirement plans, and they are anxious to assist you with whatever you need. You can also arrange to meet one-on-one -on -one with a Fidelity advisor to assist you in planning. And Fidelity can also be engaged for a small fee to manage your 403B assets for you. And our office is available to assist you. Our office hours are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time. And you can reach us at the number shown here or through our email address. Our website is also full of information. We encourage you to consult with your own financial or tax advisors. And remember, we are not licensed financial advisors, but we can offer you lots of information and general guidance, but we cannot provide you with individualized financial advice. When you go to our website, you will note at the top that there's a menu bar which has a link titled Your Role. When you click on that section, it will bring you to a drop-down menu with a list of common roles. Click on the ministerial employee and you will be taken to a collection of materials specific to your role as a minister. If you're not familiar with the Compass Initiative, I strongly encourage you to visit their website. They offer a couple of financial education programs that once completed provide an option for matching grant funds to help you either retire debt or add it to your retirement savings. These are tremendous programs that have a limited level of funding from the grantor so getting access to those funds is on a first come first serve basis. So I would encourage you to act now if you are able. Lots of information is available on our website and this QR code will take you directly to the section on the minister's matching program. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to view and receive this information. And thank you for your service to the kingdom and our church. May God continue to bless your ministry and your family.